Today, however, new parts, like new radios, are difficult to get. Therefore, when your radio needs attention, it's important that you call not just a handyman, but a highly skilled radio technician. Welcome back to Mike's Radio Repair and Restoration. We're going to be continuing on with uh, part two of our Holocrafter uh, S40 restoration. Uh, before we get into that, if you could take a moment and subscribe, I'd really appreciate it. Uh, the channel can certainly use uh, your support, and uh, we could help build a bigger, better, stronger community. So with that, um, in our last video, uh, we did a step that I call an, an initial assessment. We look at the radio, and we make sure that none of the key components are broken or missing. We tested the power transformer, and we confirmed that it is re reasonably safe to move on and begin restoring the radio. So today, we're moving on to what I call step two, which is power supply. And power supply encompasses replacing the line cord, a fuse holder, uh, putting a new filter cap in it. And very oddly enough, it encompasses um, rebuilding around the base of the audio tube. And we're going to go to the schematic, and I'm going to show you why. We de we're dealing with all of the uh, um, electrolyte-type capacitors at once. So let's take a quick look at the schematic, and we'll go over what we're going to check, what we're going to replace, and uh, why I call this step two. Okay, and in dealing with the power supply, here's how I normally proceed. And here's the power transformer with the 80 tube rectifier. So I begin by replacing the uh, power supply cord or the line cord, making, and we're going to put in a fuse um, and a, a 0.01 safety cap. Now, we always want to make sure that the hot side of the plug goes to the fuse first and then to the power switch. <clears throat> so that's how the modification is done. Make sure the neutral goes the other way and that the hot goes to the fuse first and then the switch. Real important. So next thing is, is there's a three-way or three filter caps inside of an aluminum can. And they are comprised of C27, which is 10 microfarads, C50, which is 30 microfarads, and C51, which is 10 microfarads. So we'll be removing that big aluminum can, cutting it open, and restaffing with new capacitors and reinstalling. Um, pay no attention to this. This is an error. C52 is a 0.05 standard type of a cap. But we also will be at this phase going through some of the heavier resistors. There are some big heavy power resistors um, in the power supply, R10 and R27, and we'll be looking at R32 and a lot of those uh, in around the base of the 80 tube. Um, they're very large. Sometimes they're okay, sometimes they're not. So I'll be going through those power resistors, and you can't miss them, they're very large. So next I move up to the audio tube, and I do this at the same time only because the audio tube also has an electrolyte cap like the power supply, and it's 30 microfarads. I don't know what the voltage is. It might be rated at 80 or 150. I'm not sure I'll have to look. Um, but uh, I'll go through the base of the audio tube. The audio tube gets a lot of use. Um, so a lot of these resistors have often drifted considerably. So I'll measure all the resistors, replace what's out of range, put a new electrolyte cap in it, and call it done before I move on to the next step. So let's take a peek at the top of the chassis, shall we? Okay, so here we are. This is the filter cap here that uh, when we flip it over, first we're going to do our, uh, our line cord modifications and we're going to move on to this filter cap. And this is the bad boy we're going to take off. I'm just going to get all the dust and dirt away from. And you can see that the, the dust comes off fairly easy, leaving hopefully a good finish for when I hit it with my chemical cleaner. Dusty, dusty, dusty. So now we'll flip it over and we'll identify some stuff. Okay, here we are looking at the underside of the chassis. And these are the two big power resistors that I was talking about that we're going to check. And this here is that uh, aluminum filter can we're going to remove. And up here, this is the other electrolyte capacitor attached to the uh, 
to the base of the audio tube that we're also going to hit in this section of the restoration process. So uh, at this point, let me just see if I can uh, get us a better zoom on the bottom of the uh, filter cap and I'll explain how I'm going to remove it. Hopefully you can see this better. And you can see there are three terminals on the bottom of this capacitor. And I use my nippers and I just cut these terminals off at the base. I don't desolder anything. I just, for now, I'll cut these terminals off because I'm going to replace these terminals when I restaff this cap. So that's step one so that I can get the wiring back out of the way. Now, if you'll see, there's a tab here. It's twisted. It's twisted. And there's another one hidden under that wire. Then we got one here that's soldered to the chassis. So this one, I'll be using a high watt, 60 watt or better, probably an 80 watt or better soldering iron, where I will desolder this, <clears throat> excuse me, and twist the tab straight. So I'll twist this tab straight and this tab straight and that tab straight, remove the solder and straighten up this tab. And with the wires off, hopefully that filter cap will come right off. So uh, I'm not going to bore the pants off you. Uh, I'm going to do that and then uh, we'll come back. Okay, let's review some of the work done so far. I'm going to throw some pictures up here, uh, enlarge the hole in the back, uh, put a uh, strain relief for the cord to go through. And of course, I always recycle old computer cords, ones that are uh, still quite soft and flexible. <clears throat> and when you cut the end off them and you strip the wire, if the copper is bright and clean, then it's good to use. If the copper is dull, uh, Chances are it's the, the, the uh, insulation is osmotic and a little bit of moisture's gone in. Just discard it and find another. There are lots of others around. So I've done that, and uh, like I said, I've tossed some pictures up here for you to see. Um, but uh, let's take a look in the, in the inside here now. So uh, the big uh, step up for the line cord is adding a ground. And uh, we have the line cord coming in here, and we have a ground which is conveniently now soldered to a lug on the chassis. The uh, black wire, hot wire, now goes to here. This is a new fuse holder. You can now access the fuse from the top of the chassis. And from the fuse holder, it goes to a, a, an empty terminal here on the transformer, then off to the switch, and then back to the transformer. So as I said, that our hot goes right away to a fuse, then to the switch, and then back to the transformer. And of course, our neutral goes straight to the transformer. We have a new safety cap installed here. Um, so that kind of sort of looks after the power cord. Uh, the line cord is done very neatly. Our two big power resistors I talked about are well out of range, and I've already ordered two new ones. <clears throat> and I've gone ahead and I've done the, uh, the bottom of the audio tube, and I have a new electrolic installed. I have a new 470K resistor installed, and under here, I don't know if you can see it, I have a new 680 ohm resistor installed, a new 0.0022 caps installed here, and a 0.02 cap. Again, all of the components except for the uh, 1500 ohm power resistor that feeds the uh, audio output transformer, everything was well out of range, and of course, we always change those wax paper capacitors. So the bottom of the uh, audio tube is, uh, is completely built and ready for service. Um, the next step for me here now, as you can see, I've removed the, uh, the filter cap as I'm now going to go and uh, restaff that and then and restall it in the next segment here. Okay, here's the uh, filter cap we removed. And let me just uh, put this so maybe you can read it here. Uh, no reflection. So as you can see, it has three capacitors built into it. A 30, a 10, and a 10. And there are three terminals on the bottom. And they're there. One, two, three. There's actually four. These smaller ones on the outside are the actual ground terminals. So you've got the positive connections here of your capacitor. One of them will be 10, the other one will be 10, and one will be 30. And these are grounds. So they're all rated at 450 volts, so a 30, a 10, and a 10. But you'll notice there is a symbol, a circle, a square, and a triangle. And those are the symbols that tell you what the terminals are on the bottom are. So the very top one is 30 is a circle. 
So if we turn this around, I'm hoping you can see it. There's the square punched out of the bottom. There's the triangle. I'm hoping you can see that. And I guess we go over here to this last one here. And there's the circle. So it's important then when we, when we cut this open that we have those connections right. That the tens are, that are tens remain tens and the 30 is a 30 because when we put it back in, we're going to need that to navigate um, and, uh, and redo our connections properly. Now, <clears throat> a lot of guys I've seen, this is aluminum. And this is a steel ring, and it's folded around the edge here. And a lot of guys will take the time, and they'll get a little screwdriver, and they'll pry it open and pry it open and pry it open all the way around until they get the capacitor apart. And they go ahead and they restaff it, <clears throat> and then they try to tap this down, and it never really works out very nice. It works out, but not very nice. I don't do it that way because... These capacitors tend to go bad in about a 10-year cycle time. Even if you buy good ones at higher voltage, they go dry, they go bad, and you need to serve them from time to time. To time from time to time. So the last thing I want to do is desolder all of this and pry this all apart to put new capacitors in. So what I do is I take my rotary Dremel tool with a cutoff wheel and I cut all around this area right here. And that allows me to take the capacitor apart and restaff it. And when I go to put it back together, I'll use a, a, a layer of insulating paper and I'll drop the can around it. And I'll use on the inside, I'll use five minute epoxy to put the case back together again. And it looks pretty good. It's, it's not 100% undetectable, but the, the benefit of it is, is that in 10 years time, you can use a hot air gun or your hot blower on your soldering station and you can warm up around the bottom of this capacitor and you can wiggle it off. You can make the, the epoxy go soft where you can get the, the cap top case off. You can restaff it again without having to go through all of the pain of desoldering and all the other fooling around. So I kind of sort of like to do mine that way. And that's what we're going to do next is we're going to slice that buzzard open. Okay, so we've cut it open with uh, our Dremel cutoff wheel. Typical. Sometimes they use tar to stick these things together, and you might have to use a heat and strip gun or uh, warm them up some way to. Uh, and you can see this capacitor has seen better days. Let's just unroll it for shiggles, shall we? I don't normally bother doing this because it usually is a mess, and this one's not being any exception. No great big huge burns yet that I see, other than the paper's discolored. Probably leaking. There's a terminal there. What one was that one? That was one of the one of the tens. And all the way we go through here. What a mess this is making. Boink. Okay, so some of this paper we're going to save a little bit. Boy, it's made a big mess here. You can see we have our three terminals, but we're going to replace these. We're not going to use these. We're going to do something much better than this. We're going to get it cleaned up. We're going to clean out the can. We're going to make sure the can seat's nice and straight for uh, epoxy, which, you know, it already looks pretty damn good already. Um, we're going to put some new uh, wire and some new terminals and some new capacitors in it. So uh, hang tight while I get some of this cleaned up and ready. Okay, this is our finished, well, semi-finished product. This is our cap with... Uh, 130 and 210s inside of it. Some nice fresh connectors on the bottom. So the next step is we have a piece of paper from the old capacitor that we're going to roll this up in for insulative value. And then we're going to going to uh, epoxy the top back on. 
when we do that, we're going to put lots of epoxy on the inside, up the sides, quite high. So when we put it on the base and stand it up, that the epoxy slowly runs down before it sets and creates a nice fillet around the bottom to where it'll be completely glued. So I'll come back when I get that done. This is what the finished product looks like. I think it looks pretty good. Very hard to tell that I've opened it. Got some nice new connectors on it, easy to install. Uh, ultimately, I think this is better than the prying open idea. Um, you can uh, use your uh, hot air blower from your soldering station to warm up around the base here in 10 or 15 years time and you can wiggle the top off. The uh, epoxy will let go with some uh, serious heat and you can rebuild it without having to remove it all over again. So it makes it very easy. Then you can, of course, uh, epoxy it back down. So I guess the next step for this uh, this bad boy is to uh, reinstall it. So I'm going to do that now. Okay. Here is our main filter cap reinstalled. Uh, I'll put a fresh uh, 270 K resistor in. Um, I had to desolder it, so I might as well replace it. I'm going to put the DC plate blocking cap for the audio um, section in as well. So that wraps that install up, and we're just going to flip it over and see what the uh, top side looks like with the cap reinstalled. Well, there's our filter cap back on the chassis. Um, I've used some of my magic chassis cleaner around the base of the capacitor. Uh, just makes it easier. I haven't cleaned up the whole chassis, as you can see, but I'm uh, pretty sure it's going to clean up nice. So this concludes step two of restoring a radio. And again, in, in review, uh, part one, step one, was the initial assessment to make sure that none of the uh, key po components were broken or missing when the power transformer worked. And... Uh, that gave us a go ahead, and of course, we also were worried about corrosion. Nothing was horribly corroded. Um, we just had some oxidization on a couple of the uh, trimmer caps underneath, which is easy to clean up. Um, so we've come ahead now to uh, step two, which I call power supply. And in that, we learned why I include the audio stage. So the, uh, the, uh, this step is, is complete. Um, we'll be moving on to uh, part three in the next video. So uh, thank you very much for watching. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. You really would help the channel out and help us build a bigger, better, stronger community. So until next time, we'll see you again.